Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and today we are going to be doing Fish Room Tour Part 2. This side of the fish room. There are a lot of fish you haven't seen, a lot of fish that have colored up. I think you're going to enjoy it. I have a question for you. Which side of the fish room do you like the best? This side or the side that we did in the previous fish room tour, which I will put a card in the upper right hand corner as well in the description below. I would love to hear from you which side you like the best also which fish you like the best so leave that in the comments section below and if you haven't seen part one check that out links in the description hope you enjoy the fish room tour stay tuned so this is our 50 gallon low boy tank i really love this tank this is a great tank to look at joanna did a great job with the aquascaping it's definitely in my top five if not top three favorite fish tanks to look at uh, we have the fire red epistos in here and then we got a new addition since the last time you saw it a lot of you suggested getting pencil fish and that's what we did we've got two males and two females in here they're really interesting fish i've never had them before and I, the males have a little bit more color than the females but they're super peaceful and they're just kind of hanging out they love to hang out by the leaves in the center of the tank we also have a few super red bristle nose in this tank and we're not done we still have a, a, another species of fish to add and we did look at all your suggestions and that's going to be coming pretty soon this is a tank I like a lot. This is our 33 long, uh, t for the most part, Lake Tanganyikan tank. We've got some Julietochromus transcriptus. We have some Neolamprologus lalupi, and then we've got our Neolamprologus calypterus. And these are really cool fish. If you follow us on Instagram, primetime underscore aquatics, we actually take a lot of pictures of the the calypterus just because they're so interesting. They're kind of goofy. You can see here uh, the male right here in the center kind of hanging out over those shells. There are much smaller females in those shells. And this is kind of the area where he is the dominant male in the tank. And that is his breeding area. And we can see we also have some females in this tank as well. But I like the way it's turning out. Uh, we recently added some jungle bell and it just kind of took over and it's kind of doing its own thing, which is kind of cool. So another one of these tanks I really like to look at. Yes, there is a random molly in here. We had a pair of mollies in here to kind of bring the clipters out because they were really shy. They had babies. That one survived and the adults eventually died because they were quite a bit older when we picked them up. But we do have one molly in here and maybe someday that will go into a different tank. But it does keep down on the green hair algae. This is another tank I really like. This is the top 33 long. It's got our Geophagus brasiliensis in here. Uh, really cool fish. They're going to be moving out once we get the larger tank set up because a 33 long isn't enough for nine of these Geophagus brasiliensis. They're going to get pretty big love the colors and then once we move them out that will free up this tank for other fish but they're going to get a 125 just because we really really like them all right so what's going on here you ask this is the bottom 33 long if you've been watching our channel for any length of time you would note that there used to be some thrichthys macalopinus in here that we're breeding well we've moved them out they're now in the 75 gallon and we made room for epistogramma borelii we have five of them in here there's also still, I believe, one white cloud in here somewhere. Uh, so that's what we've got going on here. And this tank also is not done. Uh, Joanna fixed it up a little bit. So we've got uh, the plants in here and she added some rocks and fixed the driftwood. So we added some Anubias. We've got the little jungle val area over there. So once that gets kind of settled in, I think that's gonna be an area where we just got lots and lots of jungle val, good for babies that wanna hide. But like I said, we're not done with this tank. We're gonna be adding some more fish just to kind of make it look a little bit nicer. But so far, I like the way it's coming. Uh, it is a work in progress. We've got, like I said, and we're even going to add some more hardscaping stuff. So you'll probably see this coming up in a video pretty soon. This is our Cryptohero Sahika 40 gallon breeder. Uh, I love this tank. We've got a couple males, a couple females, and we've got breeding activity going on in this tank. We still have five or six juveniles in here. We've sold a lot. We brought a lot to swaps and auctions. But this is a great tank. The jungle bell is starting to grow a little bit out of control. We'll probably pull some of that jungle bell out that's towards the front of the tank. We'll pull some of that out pretty soon. But this is, again, this is another one of these tanks I just like to look at. I like to watch these fish. Uh, it's a great setup, great fish, relatively peaceful for a cichlid. Really cool thing. This is a 40 gallon breeder. It's got our pair of 
red devil cichlids. Uh, the male is right up front, the female is kind of back there. Uh, I recognize a 40 gallon breeder long term is not appropriate for this fish and we are making plans to move these fish. I just have to get the other tanks built. I've got a couple more 125s that have to go up and then we start moving some fish around and these are one of the fish that are getting moved out of this tank. Uh, right now the male and the female get along just fine. We keep a very close eye on it because you never know when the male is going to decide he would rather have the tank to himself and so for right now it's working out but we will uh, definitely be moving them into a larger tank and when we do that they're going to probably get the female is probably going to get a place for her to just to kind of chill out and get away from the male if that needs to happen but we keep this is one of those tanks where we walk down every day and make sure that they're still getting along just fine and they are but just an absolutely beautiful fish i love that male in the left hand corner uh, probably one of my favorite fish in the fish room just really something cool to see this is one of the tanks that I really, really love. This is our 55 gallon Geophagus Tapajos tank. Uh, this is a, the male that you see here, the dominant male is right in the center, just becoming an absolutely gorgeous fish. We have three more in here. Uh, the other one to his right that's coming on the screen. Uh, this is the female. These two give us quite a few eggs. Uh, usually every few months we get a, a spawn from them. And then the other two, I'm not quite sure. I suspect they might be, one might be a subdominant female. The other might be a subdominant male. They generally are pushed to the corners of the tank uh, and they, they're not bullied too bad. They're just, they don't, they don't get to be in the center of the tank with the, the male and the female pair. So this is an absolutely gorgeous fish. If you're looking for geophagus that don't get super huge, this is probably the one you'd want to look at. Uh, nice for a semi-aggressive community tank. You know, I, I found they get along well with Severums. We did a species profile on this fish. I will make sure to put that in the description below if you want to check out more information on them. So this is quickly becoming one of my favorite tanks. Uh, this used to house, this is a 55 gallon. This used to house our Eureka Red Cichlids and we since put them in the 75 on the other side. Uh, we want to give them a break. They were breeding a lot. So they've got their break. In this tank, we've got two fish and I know it's always said you can't mix the two, but so far we're, it's fine. And if it's not fine, we'll make changes. Uh, thing number one, we have these Imbuna Cichlids. This is Metrochyma Msobo. These are great fish. You can see the males are starting to color up. They're going to look really, really nice. They're going to get this blue kind of white checkery sort of color where the females are going to stay mostly yellow. I think what we're going to wind up having, fortunately, we're going to have a situation like we do with the Solosi where if I had to guess, we're probably going to have four males and two females in this tank. So ratio is not ideal, but man, they're so cool. The other really cool fish that we have in here is a peacock. We've got some sulfur head cichlids. Uh, the female right now is holding and she's already given us some fry, so that's pretty cool. The male is not anywhere near what he's going to look like as he gets older. He's just starting to show his purple color. Uh, the, the yellow for the sulfur head part is really starting to come out now, but he's gonna be a really cool looking fish when he gets to be full grown. But this is a great tank. I love looking at this tank. Uh, the, the fish are really interesting. And again, so far the, the Imbuna and the Peacock right now, uh, the Imbuna and the, yeah, the Peacocks are leaving them each other alone. And so hopefully that will continue. So this is our 150 gallon community tank. It is one of my favorite tanks to look at. I realize that there is an odd mix of fish in this tank. We've got anywhere from the Frontosa that you see on the lower left, that's, that is a Lake Tanganyika cichlid. We've got the Geophagus cerinamensis. That's the very brightly colored one with the incredible finnage. Uh, the, the gold severums, red shoulder severums. And then of course we've got the ballast shark, the tinfoil barbs, angelfish, electric blue acara. We've got some small emperor tetras in here. Uh, blue garami. So there are fish from all over the place. There are clown loaches in here that are hiding right now because it's the lights are on and they like to be in the rocks. Probably have at least eight or 10 bristlenose plecos in here. Uh, some of my viewers like to call this the UN tank because there are fish from all over the world in this tank. Now, there are a couple things going on here. One, the ballast shark and the tinfoil barbs. I would really prefer to put them in a much larger tank and that is something that we're gonna be looking at in the future. They're really, really old, so there's some hesitation on my part to move them around too much. The Geophagus and the Severums are just really awesome fish. They are uh, really what I want to build this tank around, the angelfish as well. But this is, an, while it's an odd mix of fish, it does work out well. Again, you don't see any fin nipping, you don't see anybody hiding in a corner, nobody's chasing each other around, there's no bullying going on. Uh, it's Although the fish aren't necessarily something you would normally see put together, for us it's working. It really has to do with 
the order in which you put the fish, uh, the personalities of the individual fish, but it has worked out well, and it's worked out well for a number of years. This is not something we just slapped together a month ago. These fish have been together for multiple years, and we have had zero issues. So this is the bottom 75 gallon on this side of the fish room. And this is a tank that is more of a community tank. It's got our large green severum. We have a very large red tail shark. We recently added the Thrichthys macalapinus that came from the 33 long on the other side of the room. Uh, we've got a smaller Geophagus steindachneri in here, some bristlenose plecos, uh, really cool leaf tinapoma, the pearl gourami. Again, this is a tank, this was actually the first tank that we set up back when we started putting tanks in our basement years ago. It's an, it's an older tank, but we really like it. And it's a place where fish go when maybe we're not breeding them anymore, or maybe we've lost a couple of the fish that you know were part of a larger school. We've got a couple black skirt tetras left in here. So I did had to feed some blood worms. I'm trying to get some of the fish to come out uh, that we don't normally see in this, uh, in this setup. So hopefully we'll get to see some cooler fish coming out here pretty soon. But yeah, this is the 75 gallon community tank. So this is our bottom 29. We've got a lot going on here. It's a somewhat heavily planted tank with a giant sword plant over here on the right hand side. A lot of cool fish here. We've got our black angels. Uh, we've got a couple Bolivian rams in here. Uh, we have we still have our group of Epistogramma mendezi, and then we've got some pork chop rasboras, and believe it or not, there is a scarlet battis in here, along with a couple pygmy sunfish. So uh, those are usually harder to get on camera. I don't know if we'll be able to find them. Uh, we do have some albino cory cats, a couple of uh, bristlenose plecos as well, but it's a cool tank. Everybody's getting along just fine. This is the other bottom 29 that we have in this side of the fish room, and I like this tank. This is uh, Cryptoheros nanoludius. These are relatively small dwarf cichlids, new world cichlids. Their colors are really, really pretty, so they get a nice gold color. The ones that you see that are darker, I suspect are probably getting ready to start breeding for us. Uh, what I really like about them is their bright blue eyes. They have the prettiest blue eyes you'll ever want to see on a fish, and relatively peaceful so far. Again, we've got quite a few of them. Uh, they're not without their attitude. Uh, sometimes they will chase each other around, but you can see there's no fin nipping and uh, nobody's getting them bullied uh, in, a, you know, in an overly aggressive way. But I like this little fish. I think they are absolutely pretty. If you're ever looking for a smaller fish that could, at least singly could probably fit fairly well in a semi-community tank, uh, this might be the fish for you. So here we've got another great fish. This is a 20 gallon that is obviously very heavily planted. There is still one Bolivian ram in here. We need to get this down in the bottom uh, 29 with the other ones. But what's really cool in this tank is we've got some Guayanacara sturgiosi in here. Uh, we also have the Lampi rasboras. And then there are some really cool little brown darters in here as well. So it's a cool tank. I like it. The uh, sturgiosi are going to look really cool as they get older. But uh, this is probably not a tank that we will keep them in long term, but it's certainly going to be okay for them right now uh, until they get to a larger size, but really, really cool fish. Absolutely love this 20 long. This is our Neolamprologus ocelatus or Lamprologus ocelatus. Uh, these are the gold ocelatus. These are super cool shell dwellers, probably one of the meaner shell dwellers that are out there. So if this is, uh, you know, if you're looking to do shell dwellers, this might not be the one to start out with. Uh, you know, where the Maltese that I showed you in part one, they have these huge colonies. These ones, not so much. So they will eat each other's babies and do all kinds of stuff. This 20 long is not necessarily ideal for breeding, especially with the number of adults we have in here. Uh, if I decide to get more serious about breeding them, I'll probably just put one male, probably this big boy right here with one of the females, maybe this one, and see if we can't get more fry. There are fry in here. So we've got uh, little babies, but they generally don't survive in here very well unless we pull them out Pull the fry out with the shell and put them in a 10 gallon grow out and even the fry uh, They will battle each other. So at a very small juvenile age You can see them fighting. So these guys are a little feisty They will attack your hands when you put your hands in the fish tank whenever we're cleaning sponge filters We expect to get bitten by these guys. Uh, they are tiny, but really really cool. So this is a 20 long, it houses our uh, red cherry shrimp. This is a red cherry shrimp breeding tank. There are also a couple of long fin bristlenose plecos in here. Fortunately, I think I've got two males and I don't think we're gonna get any breeding out of them just yet. But 
The cherry shrimp are doing awesome and we've got many hundreds in here and it's been a very productive tank for us. This is a tank that is in transition for us right now. We have some pelvic acroma sub ocelotus in this tank. They're actually getting pretty old. They're a couple years old. They never really did breed for us. Uh, we do have some pygmy quarries in here as well, but this is a tank that in the future is probably going to house something else. We're going to probably plant this tank a little bit more heavily and see what we can do with it. So this is our top 75 gallon. These house primarily our geophagus pelagrini. These are cool fish. They're still very shy. I put the white skirt tetras in here hoping that they would bring them out a little bit. It hasn't really worked. The only time they really come out is when we feed them. So I'm going to go ahead and do that so we can see them uh, in all their glory. They still haven't colored up with a lot of the geophagus. You have to have some patience. Uh, they generally grow slow and they generally take a while to color up and these are no exception. We've had them now for over two years and uh, you know, we got them when they were maybe just a little bigger than the white skirt tetras that you see. So as you can see, slow growing and we still don't have a lot of color from them. But here you go, they are now eating. That is, like I said, they all hide behind that thing and then when it's time to eat, they come out. This is an amazing fish. This is Rhinogobius henchwensis, a true freshwater goby. Love these fish, they've got, they're just funny. Everything they do is funny. They kind of pile on each other sometimes. They'll form a big stack of fish. Uh, they're very goofy, almost like clown loaches in the way that they act. Uh, relatively peaceful. We've had eight or nine of them in a 10 gallon for at least a year and a half, if not a couple years uh, without any issues. I uh, haven't gotten them to breed yet. Haven't really been trying, but this is a really cool little fish. So this 10 gallon right now is just set aside to try and get our peacock gudgeons breeding again. I've got a male and a couple females in here. So far, no luck. We might just switch the fish out and try to get a different trio in here and see if we can get more luck. This is a cool little Lake Tanganyika species, Neolampelagus species, Falsicula cygnus. And again, these guys are growing out, so they're gonna be in this tank for a little while longer. So this is a grow out tank for some Labiotrophus, Trewavisae, and Fenga Red. Gonna be a cool looking fish, but right now they're tiny and they're just growing out. So this is just a 10 gallon grow out for some Pseudotrophia solosi. You can see mom's in there. We do leave the females in there uh, to be with the babies for a little while. I talk about why we do that in the video on how we breed fish. Definitely worth a look there. I'll put a card in the upper right hand corner. This is a grow out tank for some Eureka Red babies that we have. So this is probably, this might be the last batch that we actually uh, grow out. You can see a lot of cool males are already starting to color up. But yeah, this is just a grow out for some Eureka Reds. And this tank here is a grow out for some older Pseudotrophia Solosi. We also have a couple white labs in here. Uh, just needed a place to put them until they got a little bit larger and the Solosi may very well wind up in the 40 gallon breeder on the other side. And then here we have just a grow out tank of some star sapphires. They're getting larger, so it's, that's all we're doing with this tank. And over here, we just had a mom release some babies. This is a red zebra cichlid. So she's kind of freaking out because she doesn't like the camera around her babies, but that's what we got going on in this tank. All right, everybody, so that was Full Fish Room Tour Part Two. Again, if you haven't seen Part One, check that out. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.